Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, you've been watching a lot of house reno uh, videos that I just threw up there. Something I've been working on for a while, but we're back in the shop. So, uh, as mentioned in that end of year video that y'all saw, we're going to be tackling that D17 that's directly behind me. And tonight, the plan is to just get the sheet metal and everything on the front so that we can get that engine uh, taken out. So, uh, that's the plan as of right now, and there's lots to do uh, to get that thing ready to go. In fact, I probably won't get it completed tonight, uh, but it'll carry over uh, more than likely tomorrow. So you can see I got my time-lapse camera right there over my shoulder set up, and it's ready to go. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to flip around to that time-lapse, and uh, we're just going to start stripping this thing down from the fuel tank forward and get sheet metal and everything off of that. And then the pallet that's over my other shoulder there with the pallet jack, that's where I'm gonna stack my sheet metal and some of the components coming off. And that'll just allow me to keep everything uh, kind of organized and cleaned up here while we work on this. So anyway, that is the plan at the moment. So let's flip over to the time-lapse camera and get started. All right, so I want to just kind of jump in here real quick. Uh, the process that I just went through would be the process that you would use if you were needing to replace your radiator or have it worked on or whatever you had going on with the radiator. Uh, there's a couple of uh, screws here on the side, the straights that are hard to uh, get out. I'm probably going to apply some heat to those from the inside and they go right into that radiator. So here's the other side, you can see that one, and there's one down there at the bottom, back in there. So if you're needing to pull the radiator out of the housing, that's what you'll need to do in order to get that loose. Um, you also need to take your headlights off because they actually pin through the side. I just saw the wiring coming through there. So a couple other steps. This radiator here is gonna get uh, Send out to a radiator shop and make sure that it's good. I mean, it's nice and straight. I just want to make sure 100% this thing's good before I slap it back in there because I don't want to have any leaks. So that exposes your front end. I do have power steering on this tractor. So you got your power steering lines coming in here to the front bolster. And this was the filler cap. I took that off to slide the whole front nose cone and everything out this direction. So if we you recall the only reason I'm working on this tractor is because the engine's locked up uh, severely, so the head's already been taken off. That's in some previous videos. If you want to look at that process, then you can check that out as well. So at this point, I think I'm pretty much squared away where I want to be to separate. Um, probably going to take off this side sheet metal, and then I've got some bolts around the bell housing uh, right there that hooks up to that torque tube. And we'll have to get out this one here, two on the side, uh, one here, starter in there. Need to disconnect the main wire from that. Tack cable is going to have to come out of here, and then I just need to make sure there's nothing else that crosses over that point. I think we're, I think we're pretty good shape. But uh, anyway, with that said, I'm also going to need to block up the back half here so I can grab some of my six by six blocks and get a support built up underneath this thing. And then I think I can just pull those loose. A nice little pry cavity right here and stick my pry bar in, um, which won't need much prying on it because it should just slide right out. And then I'll just roll it. I'll just roll it straight out forward. So I have to get my nose coming out of the way there. But anyhow, can roll that forward and then that's going to give me access uh, to just the engine there. You know, I'm just kind of thinking about this here and the stability of the tractor. Everything's so tied up front. You can't do it with that this front bolster in here. Um, so yeah, I might study that a minute. I might change my game plan just a little bit, but I, I do know I'm going to have to block up that back half. So I'll go ahead and get that done and then we'll jump back in here and see what our next steps are uh, to separate. So let's flip back over the time lapse. All 
All right, so you saw there in the time lapse, uh, getting the rest of those uh, components off the side here. And I've got my blocking set up underneath here. What I like to do is stick a, a small bottle jack in there, uh, seeing how I'm gonna be sliding this back together at a later date. I wanna make sure that I have abilities to adjust up and down, seeing how I'm gonna be here on the front axle as I roll it together. So. If something would change height wise or something not line up just right, I have that bottle jack available uh, to me to adjust. So, got that in place. I do have one other component over here on the side that I about forgot about, and that's the steering shaft. I will disconnect it right here and then it will just pull out as we separate right here. Now, with this being a locked up engine the plans are to go ahead and strip off a few other components before i uh, roll this thing out it's just going to be better it's going to be more stable in particular i got to get the power steering pump off of here and that will free up my lines going up to the front so i've got to do that i want to go ahead and pull my starter loose as well so i can take this side uh, rail off of here and that will give me access a little bit easier to that. A um, couple other things I wanna make sure I do before I separate is block up the front end right here so that it doesn't pivot. When I disconnect it, I don't want it to twist sideways or something and end up making it unstable as I move it or getting anything in a bind. And then I wanna make sure I throw a couple of chalks underneath the back wheel so that I don't worry about the back half of that trying to move, which it should be pretty good, but just wanna make sure everything's blocked up good. Now to get the side rail off, there are two pretty good sized bolts here, one there, and then there's one right here. I'll have to take those off. These two right here and the two on the back and that little side rail should come right out of there. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna flip over to time-lapse camera once again, and we'll continue to disassemble this and um, yeah, and get ready for the, the engine to go back in at the new one. I say new, it's a donor. So come out of another D17 and uh, it has been uh, running and everything checks out good and good oil pressure. The power steering is going to go in here, so I want to set the timing on this guy, slide in that power steering, and then uh, line my distributor back out. When I, when I pull that apart, I'm going to be pulling the uh, gearing and everything loose, so the chance for that to get off is possible. So I have to look into maybe a little bit more of that. Once I take this one off over here to get the power steering unit off, I'll be able to see kind of what things look like. More than likely, I'm gonna have to pull this little front cover off so that I can uh, get things lined up. On the other engine, what I could do is pull that off, put a mark on the gears, and uh, then slide him you know, apart, put the power steering piece in, slide it back together, line up the uh line up the gear so yeah a little bit going on actually i can't do that i think this is all one unit yeah yeah it's not like this is just a separate component yeah i can't do that so i'm gonna have to set timing slide this whole system in there and it'll have to be timed out top dead center compression stroke and then number one uh cylinder wherever that's at on the other cap is the one that I'll have to make sure that I've got my rotor set to and then put it in. Then once I fire it up, I might have to do a little bit of an adjustment on the timing. But anyway, that'll get you where you need to be. So with that said, let's uh, start continuing the disassembly.
All right, so I am set up. I'm getting ready to remove the front end. So last night, the original plan was to go ahead and disconnect it back here between the torque tube and the plate on the back of the engine, but I've changed changed my mind on that for a couple of reasons. One, once this would be disconnected, it would just make it a little more difficult to get my power steering. There's a hole right here in the bracket. Get power steering through that, and just to get everything rolled out. It's gonna make it a little, little harder to do. So, I just felt like that it made more sense to leave the uh, engine in there, and then that will also give me access, once this front bolster is out of the way, to a little bit more of the hardware on there. Again, I'm stripping the block down completely. I wanna see what it's like, and then if everything is good in there, I will probably sell that because I've got the other engine over there that's going in. So that is the game plan. I've got my cribbing up underneath behind where my uh, split's gonna be here between the engine and the torque tube. And I've got a, a bottle jack set in there, as I mentioned uh, earlier. So yeah, that's where I'm at at this point. I'm gonna unbolt this one a bolt that's sticking out right there and then just easily slide everything backwards again the only thing i'm really got to watch out for is just the power steering lines and stuff coming through that hole so we'll see how it goes uh got my crane gantry crane set up here and got it secured so that should hold me and i'll just slide the whole unit this direction and then i can set the uh set the uh, front end out of the way. So, uh, bolt up here on the front and then the uh, few back here on the pivot point and then uh, it'll slide forward. Flip back over the time lapse and go ahead and get this front end out from underneath it. All right, I wanted to cut in here real quick. Uh, pulling that front end loose was a little more challenging than what I thought it was gonna be. Uh, one thing there is on this line, that's right underneath the crank pulley, a uh, little connector that holds it to the bottom of this plate. So you'll have to take that off. That was what was holding me in the beginning. And then right here, the coupler that hits the steering, uh, it was in a bond just the way I was uh, situated there. So shot some stuff down there, lifted the jack up here to get the pressure off of it. So I've got it separated, I'm moving out. The only thing left is just that power steering um, unit right here that's trying to feed through that hole and that line. So once I get that loose, I will ease it on out of here. Another thing that I'm not 100% sure on yet is this front axle, uh, they're always sitting on a, on a pivot pin. And I don't know if once I get this thing out, if that thing's gonna to wanna to roll out from underneath that or what. So I've gotta really be careful with that. Um, I mean, it'll move up and down a fair amount. Well, I slid it right back in place, but it's right, right where that strap is. Hopefully all that stays together. I will find out here shortly. So we'll flip back over time lapse and go ahead and get this thing pulled out. All right, so you've been watching on the time lapse here. I've been working on the front cover here. I've got the front pulley pulled. And in the process of getting that front cover off of there, uh, the way that's configured is the oil pan will bolt up here on the bottom of that front cover right up in here. So I wanted to go ahead and drop the pan, which I did. Went ahead and pulled it out of there. Um, I was kind of surprised when I pulled the pan out that there was a pretty good chunk of metal in there. I don't know exactly what it is quite yet. I don't know if it's part of one of my uh, 
rod caps or main caps, but I'll find that out at some point once I flip this thing over. Um, we'll see what's happening with it. But anyway, that's kind of where we're at at this point in time. I'm gonna continue working on getting the front cover uh, pulled off of this. And then, um, and then really once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and put the cherry picker on it. Go ahead and pull it out of the tractor. And then that way we can put it on an engine stand, flip it over and see what we got going on there. Get the, uh, all the low side disconnected and separated. Wanna see what kind of shape that crank is in while we're in there. So quite a bit to do yet. We'll flip back over the time-lapse camera and roll on through it. All right, so got the engine out here. Uh, as you've been watching there on the time lapse, um, should have pulled that steering rod out right in the beginning when it was still hooked to the front. I could have probably got that broke loose a little bit easier. But either way, had to get the steering rod out. I thought that the toothed end down there would fit through the hole right here and Closer I got to looking at it, no, it wasn't gonna fit. So I had to end up breaking that loose over here, and then I was able to drive it back out and get it out of the way. So anyway, got the engine out at this point. Um, lots of cool things here inside the bell housing, mud daubers and junk. So I'm gonna clean all of that up. Need to get me a new throw out bearing. Then I'm gonna pull my uh, pressure plate and everything off, check the clutch out and see what it looks like. Hopefully, it's okay. If it is, uh, I'm gonna slap it over uh, into this other flywheel. Actually, I might, just to find what it looks like in there, I might just take that flywheel off and replace it with the other one. It's missing a couple bolts down there into the crank anyway. So, probably just do that, and put the whole assembly if it is in good shape. And then once that's done, uh, then I can stick it on the engine stand and then we can kind of look at the bottom end. I did notice just a few minutes ago that that inside right back here, you can see that main bearing is broke. And I uh, don't know how extensive it is. I don't know if the crank is snapped somewhere as well. Could very well be once I pull it apart. I don't know. but. Either way, she's in bad shape. So, all right, I think that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Um, next video, we might do just stripping down that block, checking that out. Might be the other engine going in, I'm not sure. So, anyway, that's where we're at right now with it. Thanks for watching, hit likes, and subscribe and share the video and we will see you next time.